What's going on everybody? Welcome to Rotor Riot. I am Kevin, also known as Stinger Swarm, and today we are going to be talking about the brand new Betaflight F3 flight controller. Let's talk about some of the key features. The biggest one, um, in my opinion, is no more need for a dedicated PDB. This guy, as you can see on the bottom here, positive and negative connectors for all of your ESCs. Over here, we have the battery connector, uh, positive on that side, ground on this side. So all you have to do is wire up your ESCs to the flight controller itself, and also your positive and negative, wire in your receiver and your FPV gear, and you're good to go. It makes for a super clean build. Look at this, one board and we're done. That's all there is to it. That is gonna be one of the big features. It also has a built-in OSD with a current sensor, so you know how much current you're drawing from your batteries. Also, how many milliamp hours have you already drawn from them? How much more battery life do you have left? The OSD is completely configurable in the Betaflight configurator, and we're gonna go over that and show you just how that works. Our boot, no longer a jumper that you have to solder closed, it's just a button here. It's got a five volt regulator on board, and that is a full three amp five volt regulator, so you can power all your five Five volt needs right off of this board. There are some jumpers so that you can um, select either 5 volt or 3.3 volt for your receiver. You can also tell it that you want 5 volt or battery voltage for your VTX. And the coolest thing in my opinion, because I run a tramp and the tramp runs off of the battery voltage and it does its own regulation, this is actually the circuit for the video transmitter, even if you select the battery voltage, is still a protected circuit. So it's not going to get those surges and spikes from your ESCs and kill your VTX or your camera. So that is some really nice features. The OSD is really easy to solder in. These are the signal and ground pins for that given ESC. The really cool thing is they're in the corners for the motors. So you don't have to run wires all across your flight controller. The sales pitch on this flight controller is it is the Betaflight board that supports all Betaflight features right out of the box. That means it's D-Shot 600 ready. It does black box. So it's got a SD card slot on it for logging of black black box data, you can do all kinds of logs. Now Betaflight supports controlling your video transmitter through the OSD off of one of these UARTs. So if you have a tramp, you just plug the telemetry to the uh, TX of one of the UARTs. And if you have a Unify Pro, then you just plug the smart audio port into one of the TX of the UART. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to set that up in the configurator. I run the telemetry back to my radio so that I can have alarms in the radio as well as the OSD information. Without further ado, let's dive right into that configurator. So I was mentioning the um, telemetry off of the receiver and also the control of your VTX. So if you look here on the back of the board, back there I have the VTX telemetry wire wired into uh, the TX of one of my UARTs and the telemetry wire off of my receiver onto another one of the TX UARTs. Here on the ports page, I have UART 1 is smart port, so that's sending telemetry to my receiver. UART 2 is my um, receiver, serial receiver, and UART 3 is just set to IRC tramp. And I'm gonna show you guys in the OSD in a little while uh, just how it, easy it is to change the VTX settings. On the receiver page, I did program my Tyrannus to output the RSSI values to uh, the on the channel 8 so that the flight controller knows RSSI and I can get RSSI in the OSD. So here is the OSD options and all of the things that you can do. You can turn on or off your RSSI value. I've got mine right here. If if you want to move things, it's so freaking easy. You just click it and drag it, and now we've moved it from the bottom of the screen up to the top of the screen. It's that easy. Just drag it and drop um, the things that you want. So I run it with the main battery voltage, RSSI, the flight time, current draw, which I love, and the milliamp hour drawn. So that's how much of your battery you've consumed. Now, I did have to tweak the uh, settings on the current sensor just a little bit to get it just right. I understand everybody ends up with a slightly different number and mine isn't 100% accurate, but it's ballpark enough that I know when I need to land based on the milliamp hours consumed. I guess uh, now that we've covered that, we might as well get into the OSD and give you guys a walkthrough of the OSD and the features that are available inside of that. And then we're gonna go fly. To get into the OSD, SD menus, you're gonna uh, go middle throttle, 
yaw left and pitch forward and that brings up the main page from here we got all sorts of cool things uh, under profile you can change which uh, PID profile you have if you're not familiar with that you have the option of having three different profiles set so if you run different props and you want a different tune for different props you can totally set that up and then easily change it here there are also stick commands to change that which are probably easier on the fly but if you want to tune one or the other and you want to change it in the OSD then you can do that down here we have our PIDs and you can see all of the PIDs are available for changing there. Miscellaneous setting, that D set weight, set point weight, the uh, set point transition, some of your auto level um, tuning modes. Uh, filters, you can tweak all your filters right here in the OSD. Rates, you can change the rate profile and you can chain tweak your rates right there along with the tpa settings global filters more filter settings also available in the osd so as you can see just from a tuning standpoint the osd on the Betaflight F3 board is crazy powerful. You can tweak just about anything. I totally tuned this quad using the OSD last week without any issues. Now we have features. So you can enable or disable black box right here. Tell if you have an SD card, how much room is still available on the SD card. Set the logging rate, whether it is gonna be uh, the one-to-one -one with your PID loop or you know some fraction thereof. And then here are your VTX settings. Now you notice that there's two lines. One is for the the Tramp, one is for the Unified Pro. SA is for Smart Audio, uh, and we have the Tramp, so we control it right here. And you can see that we are not in pit mode. You can enter pit mode there. The band, I'm on race band, channel eight, that's 5917. I have 600 milliwatts selected for my power output. You just change any of these that you want. If you had an LED strip, then you can control the LED strip. Uh, set the RSSI alarm so that you have a, an alarm. Basically it makes the thing in the OSD flash whenever you hit the value that you set in the alarm. I don't really have those set to uh, uh, alert me. All of my alarms are set in the radio because I personally respond better to audio um, alerts than I do visual ones when I'm flying. But I like having it available in the OSD so that I can see it. Uh, you can see here we got the firmware ID and what version I am on. Yep, and you can even do an RC preview and see where your what your sticks effects are doing. And that's it. If you change anything, you obviously hit save and reboot. Other than the VTX, because the VTX, after you change those settings and click set, it asks you, are you sure you want to change your VTX settings? And it takes care of it right through that menu itself. But if you change PIDs, you have to save and reboot. Otherwise, it doesn't save it to the flight controller. So when you save and reboot, you're going to hear this. You hear the ESC's reboot, um, it just boosts the whole flight controller up again. That is really all there is to this OSD. It's very simple, easy to use, but crazy powerful all the same. With all that being said, now the most important part is how does it fly? I am gonna go and try not to turn this into a ball of carbon fiber and actually bring back a flying quad and some cool footage. So uh, let's go have some fun, guys. Okay guys, well that is all the flight footage I'm gonna be able to get with the Betaflight board. This setup is done for the day. I'm gonna go fly some other stuff, but uh, the Betaflight board flies great. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative, uh, getting some info on that Betaflight board to you guys. Click that like button, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If there's something out there that you'd like us to take a look at and do a video on, let us know in the comments, subscribe. All right guys, thanks so much. We'll see you next time.
Now to get into the OSD menus, um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do that hill very well. Why not? 